We are continuing our look into the book of Matthew. We've been looking at Jesus and his interactions with his disciples, asking the question of what was he trying to teach to them in that moment, and then how do those lessons apply to us today as his current disciples, as Christians. We find ourselves in Matthew chapter 16, uh, starting in verse 13. It reads, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven." Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is a really simple section of text here, um, but a drastically important section of text. Jesus starts this by looking at his disciples and asking him the question of who do people say that I am? And that's a big question. And they gave some answers, you know, some say you're this prophet, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Jeremiah. And, um, and likewise today, if Christ was to ask us, who do people say that I am? We, a lot of people, we could say, well, they say that you're a good moral teacher. Uh, some people don't even think you actually historically existed. Um, or that you're just this uh, Messiah figure in Jewish history. Or, or you're, you were a rabbi back then. Or whatever. Um, and there's a lot of different things that people can say who they think Christ was uh, and who he is. But the second question he asks them is of such more greater importance than the first. He says, but who do you say that I am? And why is this such an important question? Um, because at the end of the day, with your relationship with God, um, it is does not rest on who do other people say that he is. It rests on who do you say that Christ is? Have you recognized yourself that Christ is the Son of God? That he died and rose again for your sins? That you may be counted righteous through what he has done? Do you call Jesus Lord of your life? Do you base your living on his teachings? Do you follow his ways? Are you devoted to him? Are you willing to follow him wherever he may lead you? Um, is he your Lord? Is he your king? Those are some big questions. They're drastically important questions. They're really important because your salvation, your relationship with God is not based on what other people, what other people say about him. They're not based on what other people think he is or who he is. E even those important in your life your father or your mother or your teachers or, or your pastor or whomever, it comes down to that question of who do you say that he is? Uh, with the youth, one of, it's one of my roles here at the church is I take care of the youth program. And one of the things I often say to them is there comes a point in your life where you have to decide, is this going to be my faith or is this just going to be the faith of my parents? Uh, and most of them obviously have already come to that. Actually, if they're youth, they've already come to that point in life where they've had to make that decision. But likewise, I'll, I'll say it on here. You need to determine to yourself, who do I say that God is? Notice this, though. Peter responds and he says, you are the Messiah. He, he's affirming the Christ of, of Jesus. He's, he's affirming his position as the Son of God and the mission that he sent there for and then Jesus, in returns, turns back to him and says, and you are, and then goes to tell him his name and the role that he will play in the establishment of the church. And why is this an important fact? It's important because there's a lot of things in this world 
there's a lot of people in this world who want to tell you who you are. Or there's a lot of things that you do that people will say, okay, well, you do that, so that is who you are. For example, um, and I know this comes up all the time in my sermons and stuff, but I hunt. And so people will say, therefore, Chris is a hunter. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a man, and I'm straight, and I'm white, and so people will say that that is my identity. Um, I'm Canadian, and so people say that that is my identity. There's all these different things. But the true foundation of who I am is found in my relationship with Christ. Before I am Caucasian, before I am a hunter, before I am male, before I am a Canadian or a father or a husband or a son or a brother, before I am any of these other identifiers, chiefly I am a son of God made in his image and it's through my understanding of him that my identity is sound. And likewise with you, if you truly come to know God and follow God, then above everything else, above everything that society and culture will say, this is who you are, uh, before all of those things, you are a son or you are a daughter of God. And uh, that defeats all those other things. It, it takes importance over all those other things. It defines who you are truly uh, at your core. It's, it's pivotal. Jesus ends this section um, by saying to them, he charges them, he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Now, the reason why he did this was because, well, he had more work to do before he stirred the pot to the point of them crucifying him. Um, and then after that, he, he rises and then he does charge them to go and to spread the gospel that he is the Christ. And so that part doesn't apply to us. There's no reason for you to not tell people who Christ is. Uh, in fact, it's something that we should be passionately doing. We should strive to point people towards Christ and the truth of who he is and the truth of who they are when they truly understand and follow him and his ways. Uh, I hope that's encouraging to you today. And I hope that before everything else, you find your identity in Christ and you walk in his ways.